Hi, this is Greg, uh, giving you the demo of the DAMS prototype. And uh, I'll first take you through a short list of things we want to accomplish. Uh, first of all, the main goal today is to get your feedback, to show you what we've done, but we really love to hear your observations and your questions. Um, so any opportunity for follow-up would be great. Um, I'm going to insert some pause points in this video, so you can all pause the video if, when you get to those cards, and we'll uh, have questions and answers and that sort of thing. Um, and you may hear my dog bark in the background. Sorry, this is not... <coughs> oh, there she goes. Shamu, quiet. Um, so the first thing I'd like to show you is the system design, uh, including how it can be scaled up. And then I'll show you uh, the sources of the data we're using to build this prototype, and then the um, how we've uh, handled archival description so far. Um, and then the workflow that we've developed for submissions. And then some next steps. Okay, so into the system design. Uh, this system is designed as a web application. So you have a user on the left using a web browser, which is running a uh, web application written in um, software called Vue and that view application talks to a web server. So you're looking at a web browser and the web server on the far end is talking to another web server called the Link Data Platform Server. Um, we've also called that Trellis. Um, and Trellis is really responsible for keeping all the data organized. And then finally on the far right we have a database. Uh, Trellis can plug into a number of different kinds of databases and for production type of use we're targeting this Cassandra database which is highly scalable. For development purposes I've just swapped that out for a more lightweight option I can run on my laptop um, and it doesn't matter for the moment. But the goal is to run Cassandra there and I'll show you why in a moment. So each of those servers on the right really occupy a, a layer within the application. And each of those layers can be scaled up. So as you can see, you can have multiples of each of those servers. And so whenever uh, one of the layers starts to slow down because it's being used by a lot of client software or client uh, people, users, you can add more servers to that layer and reduce the load on each server and make sure your performance stays level and that your capacity stays level in the case of the database for storage. So that lets you handle a lot more users. Um, and this, this DAMS prototype we're showing you right now today is the um, back office sort of end of it, not the access layer. But So that may not be that many users, but you may have other forms of use so what I'm showing here is a, a couple of different services that might be connected to the same back end and do sort of automated services uh, that you need. So optical character recognition of images that would need to read images out of the linked data platform, analyze them, and then send metadata back in. Um, similarly, the audit service would need to read and compare a checksum on record to one that it generates by reading all the file, the entire file, uh, and all sorts of services are possible as well. So other forms of feature extraction like face, facial recognition or um, other feature services. All those add more load, so you may need to scale up the platform for that reason. Here we'll pause just to check in. Okay, I'm going to continue. So next I want to just talk about the data we're using as source data. Sort of the driving problem for all of our software development is data that was handed to us by you. Um, what we have are XML files. We have a, a copy of ICMS that's a snapshot of the data you had in the, uh, in the spring. And we exported from that software some XML files that uh, I think there are four of them. 
and they have data on collections all the way through items. And we also have Excel files. So in the, um, the data dump we have, there are Excel files containing item level metadata and file digests. I think these are both created by History and Associates, the contractors as they do scanning, and we've made use of those. And lastly, we have the items themselves, the digital form of the items, so images and video and audio and much more. In order to recreate the archival description, um, we took those four XML files from ICMS and we made a program to read them and for each object in them, such as a collection or a folder, uh, we create a similar resource in the linked data platform. So over there on the linked data platform, we're making a tree that uh, represents the same tree from the archival description. Um, that tree has all the, the metadata from ICMS that's been exported, so it's all been copied into the LDP server. Um, so that really lives on the LDP server as uh, RDF, Resource Description Framework Data, or Linked Data. Um, that's not particularly appealing to look at in that form. Um, you have to know how to query a, a web server directly. Uh, but luckily, we, the DAMS provides a browsing interface. I will show that to you all right now. Let me pull this up. Okay, so now we're looking at the the home page of the prototype, the DAMS prototype. And uh, there's nothing on the home page right now, but uh, one of the menu options we have is the archival description. So I'll click on that and we'll pull up a list of top level objects. So if I click on one of those, I see its description on the right. This is the, uh, the National Council of Negro Women Incorporated Records according to the title from ICMS. Um, see subgroups, records for collection information, right? So let's click on SG1. And here we see all the data about SG1. This data is all coming from ICMS and just displayed here, kind of rudimentary form, but gets you the idea. And you can drill down as far as you like Here's a series, here's a box. This box has constitutions and bylaws. And then here's a folder. I guess this is folder one. So the entire tree of the data you have in ICMS is replicated here. And of course, it's not really stored in this form that you're looking at it. It's in the data as resource description framework in the LDP server. pause here for any feedback or discussion. Okay, I'm continuing. Thank you. So next we're going to look at the submission workflow. Um, this is a interface that facilitates ingested files. So this is how you upload. Um, it also does some work with the Excel files I mentioned. And uh, it may link files to the archival description. So where they connect by a file name convention used by you guys. Um, we use that naming convention to link them to the appropriate area of the archival description. It might be a folder, it might be a box whatever comes closest that we can find up there in the archival description based on the file name. Um, finally, all this data is uploaded at the end of the process into the LTP server. Uh, and, you know, the dance provides browsing of these submissions. This is also a work in progress. Let me show you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a submission workflow. 
So I'll go to the submissions area of the prototype. <clears throat> and uh, there's a number of test submissions I've created here, but I'll create a new one for us. Um, let's call this one a submission. Okay, when that shows up, there it is. So this is basically a box that we get to upload files into, making up a submission package. <clears throat> and I'm going to upload some things to that. So I'm going to go to my file system and find some of the file samples from you all. So. If you're seeing this, I am taking uh, the first document in the first box, in the first folder of series 19. And I'm going to take the whole folder and drop it right into that submission. So now we look on the website and the submission has been expanded by adding that folder and all of the files within that folder are represented here. They haven't been uploaded yet. There's sort of an empty progress bar on the right. However, if I click on one of them, I can show you that a little link has been established based on the file name going from this file to the appropriate area in the archival description. So you can see that link over here on the right. We're doing some linked data style linking between the new file and the, um, the description for the folder around it or the box around it. Um, the next thing I want to do is grab some of the metadata. So I'm going to get an Excel spreadsheet that we have. So in this same sample collection, We have that. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, so this is a spreadsheet. I'll open it up quickly so you can see it. Um, has columns representing different different Dublin Core elements, and one of them is the identifier. So we can use that identifier to um, figure out what it's describing. <clears throat> and we're going to extract all the um, information in here as uh, linked data. So if I go back to the website, OK, here's our submission again. And now I get this spreadsheet and drag it over here into our submission. OK. So now we see the spreadsheet is part of the submission. Um, and there's a little option here that says Extract Dublin Core. So if I push that button, then a new object appears below the spreadsheet that is the Dublin Core that was extracted from, that, from the rows and columns that we looked at. So I can show that to you. So this is the, uh, the object that um, contains all the linked data that we got from the spreadsheet. <clears throat> it's derived from that spreadsheet. And in, in this view, you can see uh, sort of a preview of all that linked data. So here's an example of a record that it has for the first document in series 19. So it's box one, folder one, document one, and this is a newsletter called New Careers. And there's a number of statements about that object. You know, it's date, uh, the fair use information, creator and subject. All of this uh, coming from History and Associates from that Excel file. Um, and in addition to that one, there are several more records in here. I think there's hundreds of them. So. What we've done is we have both a set of files that will become part of the repository, and 
we have uh, a spreadsheet that's contributing a bunch of linked data to the repository. All that will be stored in a tree much like you see it here under the submission. So it's all managed as a piece. Uh, but in the access view, we will sort of merge all of these statements about items and archival description hierarchies into a form that brings it all together for the viewer. Um, and that'll be done through a triple store, which is not implemented yet. So we're just working on this submission workflow. So that's an example of how we add spreadsheet metadata into our linked data repository. And it'll work similarly with uh, extracted MD5 or um, checksum data. So that's a different spreadsheet. Um, I have to add that functionality in here, but you'll be able to drag that spreadsheet in here, have it extract all the um, statements about what the checksums should be, and then those will become part of the repository too. And, and they'll later be used by an audit service to verify that the checksums are intact. Okay, going back to the presentation. And here we're going to pause the video. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. It's just our next steps. So I wanted to just cover a few of these things in case you're wondering what we're up to. Um, like I said, there's the digests that haven't been implemented from Excel. So getting those into the repository is the next step. Um, we also want to add structure for complex objects. So we saw that we had document one and it consisted of several pages, which were images. But those pages weren't uh, really linked in series. They weren't uh, described as a series of images within a paged item. In that case, I think it was a, a, a periodical. So we want to do that sort of thing. Uh, we also want to support deselection of files. So if you drag a whole folder into the repository and you want to not ingest all of it, you want to deselect some things or even rearrange some things prior to, to upload. Um, yes, and so another thing we have to support is uh, embargoes and access restrictions, and those will be annotations that you add into the uh, submission tree there, so protecting certain documents or files. Okay, that's the end of the demo, and I'll stop talking here in the video and we can talk in person. <laughs>